that sanctuary each and every place. There is nowhere our God is not. So in this knowing, we are so grateful and thankful as we come together and say, so it is. I have a few words of wisdom today. And the first one is from Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. People are like stained glass windows. They sparkle and shine when the sun is out, but when the darkness sets in, their true beauty is revealed only if there is a light from within. And from L.R. Most, do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. All things break, and all things can be mended, not with time, as they say, but with intention. So go, love intentionally, extravagantly, unconditionally. The broken world waits in darkness for the light that is you. And from our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, Sitting in the shadow, we may not really believe that there is any sunshine, but the sun would be there all the time. It is there, but we must awaken to it. So I want to talk about the song a little bit um, that we just heard. Um, it comes from the book of Psalms in the Hebrew scripture. And um, the writing of much of the Psalms, the books in the Psalms, is uh, attributed to David. And David was an individual who seemed to be constantly in conversation with spirit, constantly talking to God with God, and singing praises and um, poetry, if you want to call it that, writing poetry. But this this particular scripture, the 23rd Psalm, has everything, has everything we need to know in it. It is, is so beautiful, and I am not going to speak with the, with the translation that you just heard uh, Ken sing, but I'm going to talk about the scripture as it is in um, the Bible that I use a lot, and that Bible is the St. Joseph New American Bible, so I'm going to use some of that language. Um, he talks that the Lord is my shepherd, and there is nothing I lack. The very first sentence, the Lord is my shepherd, there's nothing I lack. Have we, have we listened to that? Have we paid attention to that? Have we carried those words with us into our lives? Then he goes on to say that in green pastures, he makes me lay down to still waters. I am led. He restores my soul. He guides me along right paths. Oh my goodness. Not only is spirit with us, but spirit is constantly guiding us in the divine masculine and in the divine feminine, as we heard in the song. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, there is nothing I fear. For God is with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Surely goodness, oh wait, excuse me, I always, I always jump. Um, Spirit has set a table before my enemies and anoints my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's perfect. It's a beautiful message for us. And do you know when we hear it the most? We hear it the most when we are in the dark times. And there has been a loss. This is a scripture that is used at more memorial services and funerals than probably any other scripture. So thinking about this, and our, our top title for today is Unlearning the Fear of Darkness. We can take these words and we can, we can embrace these words and carry them with us and we know. We know that Spirit is here. Spirit is guiding us. Spirit is, is supporting us. And Spirit is giving us all we need right now. Um, I don't know about the work that each of you do during the week, 
But for me, I'm often working with someone who is is fearful or challenged or um, unsure of, of what's going to happen next, which we all are, of course, and and doesn't know which way to turn. And so these words are are beautiful reminders and reassurance for each of us. And if we could just stop hitting the panic button and take a deep breath in and and breathe in that that energy and that knowing that we are always, always connected. And to, to turn away from that idea that darkness is a bad thing. Because here's what we do. <clears throat> we label, dominate, control, and cast negativity on spaces as dark and ominous. We see something, we feel something, we judge it. And I know we don't like that word judge, but we do. We assess it in a heartbeat, we decide it's good, it's bad, it's ugly, whatever it is. And so too often, we want to avoid darkness. We don't want to consider darkness in our lives. And we think it's bad, but it's not. The darkness is filled with mystery. and We don't know what's there until we shine the light upon it. So we want to move away today and this week from the idea that maybe darkness is bad or evil. It's full of creepy stuff, um, uh, creepy crawly stuff. That's what we, my mom used to call it. And we know that things can be hidden in the dark and secrets can light it. But what an amazing process for each of us to be able to step in and uncover the mystery of the dark and to shine our own internal light upon it. So what we're going to look at today is let's let go of some of the childhood ideas around darkness. Let's seek new understanding and know that this here is also here for a purpose, for a divine purpose for us to learn from it, to know something from it. There was a man named Michael who talks about a very dark time in his life. You see, Michael... Uh, was incarcerated with a life sentence in a supermax prison. And he talks about the darkness and the things that transpired during his life in prison and because of uh, where he came from, how he got there, and the circumstances, he spent a lot of time in solitary confinement. So he was in a very small, dark space. The only light that was came into the space where he was, was through a very small window up on the wall. And so every day he would peer out the window to try and connect with the world outside, to try and bring in the light. And he used to watch the birds outside the prison cell. And what happened was a robin showed up one day and began to build a nest on this big, huge fence that wasn't far from where he could see. And, and in the fence, uh, the robin was building the nest kind of in a little uh, crux place where there was a big, huge metal gate that oftentimes the prisoners came through to come out into the yard. And what he began to notice was that she'd start to get the nest built, and then someone would come through the gate, the gate would slam, the whole thing would rock, and, the, and everything that she put together would fall. Now, he said something in his story that surprised me. He said he offered affirmative prayers for this bird. So he had some teaching, he had some insights, much of it maybe he found while he was in prison. But in that process, he kept praying that the robin would get a clue and go someplace else. <laughs> but she didn't. And so finally she got the nest built. It looked like it was fairly stable. And then he would see the male robin coming and bringing worms and whatever to the female and taking care of her and always keeping an eye on her in the nest. And then she put some eggs into that nest. He could tell that there was something in the nest. And he was very hopeful. He was very excited. I mean, what, what did he have to focus on? This was a bright, brilliant light in his life. And the storm set in. And when the storm set in, the wind and the rain hit that gate. And that gate slammed a couple times. And the nest fell and everything in it was destroyed. And Michael talks about how brokenhearted he was to see these birds 
on the ground to see if there was anything salvageable, and it was gone. It was destroyed. A very dark time. And then the two birds flew away, never to be seen again. But the story doesn't end in the darkness for Michael, because he goes on to say that a few days later, <clears throat> he received a card in the mail from a science of mind practitioner. This individual lives in Illinois, or did at the time. The card pictured a bird's nest with robin eggs in it, three of them. And under the picture were the words, I dwell in all possibilities. And his heart was lifted. And his soul began to feel comfort. And he began to sense a light within himself. He felt that message was sent directly to him by God. He's absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. He believed it was a sign that his status would change and he would be released from the hole that he was living in called solitary. After a total of 14 months, he was moved back into the general population. He found hope. He found promise. He found light in the darkest of places. At a time when he, his life felt so bleak, he was encouraged to listen, to listen to spirit's language, to listen to guidance, and to do life differently than he had in the past. And his story doesn't end there. His story is in this month's Science of Mind magazine. And I encourage each and every one of you to read it. And if you can't find it or don't have a copy, you can get to it online. But he has a beautiful story about what all he's done and now the work that he is doing outside of the prison. So what we want to do is we want to, we want to, we want to pay attention to those moments when we feel darkness, when we feel a shadow coming over us, when we feel like we're kind of lost, because that's what happens in the dark, right? We can't find our way. There's, there doesn't seem to be any light. There doesn't seem to be any direction. And the truth is, spirit is there as well. And we can move forward, and we can find the direction we need. And it's not so terribly challenging as long as we open up to that idea. Jay Shetty wrote a book called Think Like a Monk, and I have talked about his book before. I love this man. I love his writing. And what he talks about is he says, when we cling to temporary things, we give them power over us, and they become sources of pain and fear. But when we can accept the temporary nature of all things, we can feel gratitude for the good fortune for what we're having right now and what we're experiencing, and then and then we can let them go and be grateful that we were able to borrow them for a time. This is a tough one for us. I keep reflecting back and thinking, when did we become attached? When did we become, and I believe it's, it, it, it's part of our humanness to, to be around something or someone and kind of holding on and, and thinking it's going to last forever, that person's going to be with us forever. And so the cause of fear is attachment. Because we're now holding on so tight, we don't want to let go, and we're fearful what's going to happen if we do. And that happens in every aspect of our lives. The, the normalcy of having a job, the intensity of having a, an intimate relationship, family members, parents, children, grandchildren, all of it, neighbors. We want to hold on, and we want to keep this here. And what we are reminded is that it's temporary. They're temporary. We're all temporary. This is just a way station for us in our eternal process of life. And so the cure is detachment for us to say, okay, well, it wasn't mine to begin with. All of these things I have, I'm not taking them with me when I leave here. And if anyone's figured that out, how to do that, I'd like to hear about it, but I haven't found a story about that yet. <clears throat> so we have this process, and I wanted to bring this today because today being Mother's Day, is that we, we, we look at our parents and we know 
we know that there's a good chance that they're going to leave us at some point in time. We have a family member who becomes ill, starts to have health challenges and struggles, and we go into fear mode, that we're going to have to let them go, that we're going to lose them. And would it be great if we could kind of reel that in a little bit and go into that place of, of what can I control and what can't I control and live in that space and be accepting and embracing of all that there is. I have a quote here from Shantideva who says, it is not possible to control all external events, but if I simply control my mind, what need is there to control other things? How beautiful is that? And this quote is actually in Shetty's book, Think Like a Monk. And what he, what he talks about in all of this is he says, what happens to us when we get into this place of wanting to control and wanting to hold on, what develops for us is what's called monkey mind. But when we learn to detach and we learn to let go and we learn to allow, we move into monk mind, which I thought was such a beautiful way to say that, that I don't need to control anything but that's going on out there. I can't control the conditions. I can't control the fact that maybe my parents aren't going to be with me till the end of my days. I can't control that, but I can embrace the moment and the time I have. So I have a little story for you. There was a man who stopped at a flower shop, and he wanted to order flowers to be sent to his mother for Mother's Day. She lived 200 miles away from him. As he got out of his car, he noticed a little girl sitting near the shop, near the floral shop, and she was crying. And he asked her what was wrong, and she said, oh my gosh, I wanted to buy a red rose for my mom, but I only have 75 cents, and a rose costs $2. And the man smiled, and he said, why don't you come in with me, and I'll help you get a rose for your mom. So they go in, he orders the flowers for to be sent to his mother. He buys the rose for the little girl, and as they're coming out of the shop, he asks her, do you, do you need, need to give your right to your, to your mom? And she said, oh my gosh, would you do that? And he said, sure. So she gets in the car, and she directs him, and the next thing he realizes, they're driving into a cemetery. And she gets out, and she places the flower on the grave, of her mother, and the man woke up. He began to realize that this little girl has just taught him a priceless lesson. He went back to the shop, canceled his order for the flowers, and drove the 200 miles to see his mother and wish her happy Mother's Day. We have this tendency to detach, and we think that detachment means ignore. If I'm detached, I, 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 if I'm detached and I'm not trying to control my parents or my kids or, or this individual I know that's having uh, health challenges, uh, if I detach, then I get to ignore it. And that's not the truth. It's not the same thing. Detachment means I'm very aware that I can't control the situation, but I'm also very aware of what I can control, and that is my attitude, my behavior, my attendance to this person, my, my interaction with them, my conversations with them. And sometimes it's that, that moment when you're, when you're in that place and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm having this conversation for the 9,000th time and here we go again. And taking that deep breath and saying, okay, this individual needs to be heard right now. And I can control that. And I can support. And I can listen. And looking at what all of that means. Because what if we control our minds and we realize we don't have to control a single other thing. David Richard gives us this quote that says, going further into despair is what grants access to hope. Going fully into pain grants access to healing. Going fully into the dark opens to the light. An unconditionally embraced predicament becomes a threshold of what comes next. The either or changes to both and. And I don't know about you, but I've been learning this lesson a lot in the last couple of years, that I don't have to pick one and let one go. When I remind myself that I live in a limitless 
universe, that my cup is overflowing. When I recognize that, I know that spirit will give to me all I'm ready to accept. So I don't, I don't believe in an either or world. I haven't for a couple of years. I just don't think that's the world I live in. And so what we're going to look at this is that we have this ability to recognize this and live free from limitation because it's the either or that limits us. Now, granted, you can't be in two places at once. I've tried. I've tried this one a lot, and so far I haven't managed to master it. So there is, you know, you might not get to be both places at the same time, but you might be able to find out a way where both situations work, both circumstances work. So when we think about the fact of either or, that's really kind of a lack of consciousness. And we, we, we look at it from, from that perspective because we don't think we have enough, we don't think there's enough. And the world that we have access to, the divine presence offers us both, offers us all of the above. You don't have to pick A, B, or C. You can choose all of the above. And as we seek the light in the darkness and embrace all that's offered, we come to realize our own true potential. And I don't care what age you are in physical terms of earthly existence, you have potential. You have purpose. We all do. And we can, we can embrace that. We can tap into that. And as we become more aware of that and we realize that, we, we realize that we can access all life, all of life. And then what happens? Our thinking begins to change. And that's what our founder taught us. Change your thinking and you will change your life. What a concept. And now we have some tools to look at. A lot of tools are actually to help us change our thinking. Jay Shetty gives us this quote. <clears throat> Fear motivates us. Sometimes it motivates us towards what, toward what we want, but sometimes, if we aren't careful, it limits us with what we think will keep us safe. Fear. What a blessing it is. To look at that and say, I have a I have the ability right now in this moment to choose. I can face this fear. I can embrace it. I can take time to meditate on it and see if there's a deeper thing going on here for me. And, and Shetty talks about this quite a bit in his book about going deeper and going deeper until you have that realization of what exactly it is I'm afraid of because it's never what we thought it was. And the only reason that I say that is because so many of us have chosen to think we have a fear and we've never taken it deep enough to find out exactly, exactly what it's triggering within us. And so it can motivate us to grow, to deepen, to expand, to understand much, much more. It's a beautiful process. But if we're not careful and we step back from fear and we allow ourselves to halt the process because, oh my gosh, now that's freaking me out and I can't do this right now and I'm hyperventilating. When we go into that, we have just set a limitation on who we are and what we can do. And by setting a limitation on who you are and what you can do, you have also set a limitation on spirit. And that's the place we want to expand. That's the place we want to grow. That's the place we want to embellish more of who we are and how we can be. Sharon had three quotes for us today, and, I, and when she sat back down, I told her, I said, well, we had three for three. So uh, I have a couple quotes here that you've already heard, but we're going to talk about them again anyway, because they're that great. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross tells us that people are like stained glass windows. They sparkle and shine when the sun is out, but when the darkness sets in, their beauty is only revealed if there's a light from within. Each one of us came to this expression with a light that cannot be burnt out, cannot be dampened. It's within us. And all we need to do is allow it to shine, allow it to expand, allow it to shine out into the darkness. And by the darkness, I don't just mean a physical space. 
sometimes you're in conversation with someone and, 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 and there's high emotions and there's some intensity and it starts to feel dark and it starts to feel heavy and it starts to feel burdensome. So even in those moments, can, what can we do to take that deep breath in and just breathe light into it? And what we do, those of us who've been trained in, in science of mind and religious science, a lot of times we'll say, what, what is the principle here? What is the spiritual principle I can bring to this situation? Because the spiritual principles that we look at are all filled with the light of the power and the presence that we have access to. L.R. Nost tells us, do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. All things break, and all things can be mended, not with time, as they say, but with intention. <laughs> so go. Love intentionally, extravagantly, unconditionally. The broken world awaits you in darkness for the light that is you. I cannot walk away from this place, this moment in time, this afternoon, without reminding each and every person who is here in the room and those who hear this message throughout the week that you are the light. You are the light, and you are bringing this light to this world. And we have a lot of darkness in this world. You can see it if you, if you watch the news. Bless your heart. Um, uh, I'll keep praying for people who watch the news. But um, I, 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 I don't go into that into that arena, mostly what I do is research information that I'm hearing about to find out the truth as much as I can, and then the answer is take it to prayer. Take it to prayer. That's what that's what I think the news channels are for. I don't know if they knew that when they first came on board, but that is so that we can have all these wonderful, beautiful things that we know we can help shift, change, and, and empower by just taking it into prayer. So the world has been waiting for us. For those of us who understand, who know how to expand, who know how to love, who know how to care, who know how to shed light on any situation in any circumstance, the world has been waiting. And all we must do is listen. Listen to that voice within, because that voice is coming with a brilliant light for each of us to guide us to move forward. Too often, we think we just have to shut down and cope. And I'm here to tell you, shutting down and coping are not the same thing. We try to back off. We try to hide. We try to, we, we had a whole year, well, we've had a couple of years, but we had a whole year, a whole year dedicated to shutting down and living in isolation or solitude for some of us. And we don't have to go to that degree. Now, let me be really clear here, because I know how sometimes my words get uh, can be confusing. If you are struggling and you aren't coping well, then you get to take care of you first. You don't get to run yourself ragged and go out and try and help all these other people because that's not going to serve you and it isn't going to serve them. So the first we, the first priority we have is to self, to help with the healing, to help with that that awareness, to help with that loving nature that we need to, to care give ourselves and then and then when we fill our cup and we recognize that our cup is not only full but it's overflowing now we have all the wonderful energy love and an ability to go out there and support the rest of the world each one of us is here on purpose and I'm not saying that you are supposed to run for president I'm saying that you have purpose, and that purpose may have been to be a mom, to be a, uh, a, a supporter, a nurturer, even in the masculine, for someone, for, for someone's growth and someone's development. Perhaps it's being a teacher. Perhaps it's doing artwork. Perhaps it's, it's using your beautiful, incredible voice to sing and touch the hearts and souls of others. We all have a purpose. What we get to avoid is comparing our purpose with someone else's and know that each one of us is here by divine right action. And to look at that place of where can I shed the light. So that's what I want us to do this week. I want us to go through this week and look at all of the places where we can shed light into the darkness, into the corners, into the minds and hearts of those who are just looking for something 
to hope for. And I leave you with this final quote of Dr. Ernest Holmes. Sitting in the shadows, we may not really believe there's any sunshine, but all the sun would be there, but the sun would be there all the time. It is there, but we must awaken to it. All we need to do is have that awareness. In the darkest night, the sun is still shining. We just might not see it. We've had some wonderful weather recently. Hasn't it been incredible? It's just been great. And, and I really thought the house was going to wash away a couple of nights ago. And as I'm, as I'm getting ready for bed and I'm hearing this, this, this rain and, and the water pouring out over the gutters of the house and whatever else was going on out there, I mean, it just sounded crazy. All I had to do was just remind myself experiencing all of this. And that regardless of why it's raining to the degree that it is in Colorado, is irrelevant. I'm safe. I'm protected. I'm fine. We're okay. Eventually the rain will stop. It came back again, but it stopped again. It's probably going to come back again. We're going to get through this. We're just, I just keep telling myself, you're just not used to this. You're just not used to this humanity. We'll be fine. So this brings us back to the awareness, the knowing, the trust, our faith in that power that will absolutely carry us through. Let us detach from the fear, not ignore it, not avoid it, pay attention to it, see what we need to learn from it, but detach from those components that we feel like we're holding on to so tightly. And move into that place where we recognize that everything we look at Everything we consider, we are shedding light on it. It's that simple. Anytime you say, well, let me take a look at this, let me read this again, you are shedding light on the situation, on the words, on the insight. We no longer have to think of darkness and fear as controlling us. We don't have to think of our time as having dark days. We can live in that place of balance, and beauty and love. And we're unlearning our fear at the same time we're learning to trust, to believe, and to know the power that is within each and every one of us. Because what we are doing this week is we are coming out of the dark. Please pray with me. There is a presence that permeates all life. It was here yesterday, it will be here tomorrow. It has always been and always will be. This power, this energy, this essence is what we call God, spirit, divine wisdom. And what I know right here and right now is that this very presence is within each and every one of us. It's filling our hearts with that love that overflows to the rest of the world. It is that beautiful voice that whispers into our ears or, or speaks into the mind from time to time, guiding us, reminding us to look at something differently, allowing us to look at where we can go, what we can do, and how we can expand and have a really beautiful, full, rich life because God is here. And knowing this, we know this day that no matter what is going on, no matter what the conditions outside of us are, what's happening out there in the world, we have this energy, we have this place where we can go and be comforted and be supported. We can feel the love and the energy. And it's beautiful and it's good. And it's perfect. And so what I know today and every day that in the goodness and the greatness that is God, there is light in the darkness. And each one of us has the right and the ability to go and spread that light throughout the land. To every person we connect with, every time we smile or wave. And because of this, we know that we have purpose for all that we are and all that we are becoming. 
and it's beautiful, it's good. It's all God, and it's already done in the mind of God, where everything is already manifesting, whatever we are seeking, whatever is on our hearts, it's coming forth for us now. And we cherish that, and we, and we celebrate it, knowing it's all good. It's all God. Oh, and so today we bless all people everywhere, and we also acknowledge the divine feminine in all people and how that shows up in the beauty of life. And we also hold in our hearts deep love for those who lost a mother and may be challenged with the energies of this day and for all of the moms everywhere who've lost a child and the energy of, of being that place of loving and, and knowing that maybe they're not right here but they are still with us and we still carry them in our hearts it's perfect and it's beautiful and so I simply release these words onto the law. As I said, knowing it's all done in divine right action, we just close this prayer out knowing there's nothing more that needs to be said or done. We let it go, we let it be, and together we say, And so it is.
Hello. I'm Reverend Jen Wild, Senior Minister for New Dawn Center for Spiritual Living. New Dawn Center is a global community, and we welcome all people, all paths, all ways of thinking, all philosophies. So know that you are welcome here, and thank you for joining our online community.